Good evening. I'm James Satterley. Welcome to Sports Monday. So we set sail to La Isla Bonita yesterday where the San Pedro Pirates hosted Verdes FC to close out the PLB opening season in week 14. San Pedro has been red hot of late while the visiting Verdes team of San Ignacio comes in as the team to beat. The home team looks to strike early. Both Elroy Queeling and Luis Valdez go hard for this 50-50 ball, but it's the Verdes player who emerges with possession. While the Pirates, Valdez tries to make something out of it, but the referee rules against him. The other end, it's Jared Davis looking to open the scoreboard for Verdes, but the left foot travels outside the sticks. Verdes continue to press as Robert Silva de Inma mounts this individual effort only to be denied by a big-time save from Jerry Trejo. We're 19 minutes in when Henry Gonzaga launches this set piece in the Verdes box. Both Hector Martinez and Hazael Requena move to convert, but it's Martinez's diving header that gives the Pirates a one-zip lead. Martinez might have hurt himself, but it would have been temporary because he would continue. In search of the equalizer, Elroy Quillen directs this in-stringer to Desmond Wade, whose power header screeches past the far post of Roger Trejo's goal. The Pirates' one-nil lead would hold up to intermission. We open second half play with Hector Martinez looking to double his tally. The beat is perfect, but the ball doesn't bend. Give Martinez more props when he takes on the Verdes defense on this solo flight to trigger this wonderful heel launch that would have beaten Zeron Sagestume in the Verdes goal, but it inches outside the sticks. So Verdes gets busy. Elroy Quillen looks for Thomas Alcides, whose header is rather disappointing from that range, and he knows it. Then Marquesi then tries to hook up with Alcides in front of goal, but the ball just wouldn't cooperate. The boys from the West continue to press, and Jared Davis is set up by Gilroy Thurton, only to see the final touch travel outside the target. Thurton then opts for the long-distance bomb that bears outside the goal in its final seconds of flight. Then Marquesi turns on this ball in search for the equalizer that creates excitement, but not the required results. The Verdes pressure pays off when Thurton centers to Alcides, who said that bounces off the upright to Elroy Queeling, and his left foot swing ties the score. The San Pedro Pirates weren't about to settle for a draw, and Jesse Smith's connection with this set piece is denied only by the crossbar. This defensive move by Franco Toledano culminates with a right foot to Denmark Casey's jaw, for which the San Pedro player is chased off the field of play by a red card. In the meantime, this unnecessary body tackle by Hector Martinez is just too much for the referee, for which the San Pedro striker is also a recipient of a red card. The ejection of Martinez and Toledano will hurt the Pirates in their very next outing. In fact, it might have hurt them in this same ball game in the final minutes of play because Thomas Alcides outruns the San Pedro defense and then slices to Elroy Quillen, who scores into an empty net, giving Verdes the two-zip big W. We came here for the win, you know. Um, San Pedro is a very good team. They play a good home, but the main thing was to get the win to keep Bandits close in that five-point lead, you know. Bandits finished on top of the table, and we want to keep them close, you know with that five-point margin. We know you were down. Tell us how you and your team kept in that game. Well, um, it was one error, you know. We was controlling the whole game, and one error happened, and we didn't hold our head down. We stick to our game plan and play out the game, and when we get the opportunity, we capitalize on the opportunity, you know. We got more chances. The game could have been finished from a long time, you know, and we put ourselves in that hole, and definitely we dig ourselves out. It was a hard game, you know, I mean, not everything we can win, but I mean, I'm, no matter what I think, I'm still proud of the guys. And we do come back next season, trust me, it won't be easy for any team. Home game, away game, it was all an experience the first season. Being a new home, a new team coming in, trust me, threat is there. In other results from week 14, the Belmopan Bandits beat Wagia FC 7-2 on a triple from Georgia Welcome. The BDF trampled Freedom Fighters all a 7-zip on four goals from Jaren Lambe while the Placencia Assassins knocked out Police United in a one-zip blast. Now, here are the four teams to make it into the PLB playoffs. Belmopan Bandits is the number one seed overwhelmingly with 35 points, with only one loss in 14 outings. 
Redis FC is the number two seed with 30 points, showing two season losses in 14 appearances. We had said last week the BDF needed a miracle. Well, they certainly got it as both San Pedro Pirates and Police United fell in their final regular season outings. But San Pedro moves on on a goal differential of plus five. The police was at plus two. It wasn't good enough. The playoffs now get underway this weekend with San Pedro Pirates hosting the Belmopan Bandits while Belize Defense Force will have home field against Verdes. We can't tell you which one is Saturday or Sunday. There'll be a meeting later today for that to be decided. Turning to the volleyball scene, the National Secondary School Sporting Association National Volleyball Tournament was staged over the weekend at the Belize High School Gymnasium here in Belize City. Nine-time defending champion St. Catherine's Academy made it 10 in a row by defeating Stan Creek Ecumenical 25, 6, 25, 11, 25, 13 in the finals. We say heartfelt congratulations to St. Catherine's. Muffles College finished third. On the male side, Toledo Community College was tested by Ladyville Tech in the title series, but the Toledo team prevailed 25, 21, 25, 23, 27, 25, winning the championship and forcing Ladyville Tech into the runner-up spot. We say congrats to TCC. Belmopan Comprehensive was able to stay in the hunt and picked up third place. In the awards ceremony, the best server on the male side was given to Jalen Martinez of Ladyville Tech, best blocker, Norris Fisher of Muffles College, best attacker, Jalen Manzanero of Ladyville Tech, best setter, Randall Wingright of Toledo Community College, and he was also voted most valuable player. Hey, when you're big, you're large. And the best receiver defensive player was Christian Jackson of St. Ignatius High School. On the female side, Vanisha Payne of New Hope walked away with Best Server Award. Amberly Marine of St. Catherine's Academy proved to be the best blocker. Aya Safa of St. Catherine's was the best attacker in this tournament. Ale, Aliana Musa of St. Catherine's Academy walked away not only with the Best Setter Award, but she was voted MVP. Hey. When you're big, you're large, Ayana Musa. Best receiver, defensive player, went to India Garden. And of course, again, we have to say congratulations to the St. Catherine's Academy team. When you're big, you're large, okay? Hey, folks, that's our show for today. Hope you enjoyed it. We invite you back, same time, same place next week. Ja! Overall, I'm James Adderley.